a Lifetime Achievement Award. Gosh, I'm just going to take a moment to take this in. Well, it was exactly four months ago, November 11, 2004, that I got an email invitation from David Sherman from a place called the Sporting Chance Initiative in Glasgow, Scotland. And I said, hmm, ha, entrepreneurship, women, sports, and Scotland. Hmm, just my cup of tea. So I said, Joel, is it all right if we go to Scotland in March? And he said, yes, honey, that would be fine. So, also, a Lifetime Achievement Award for the Jagra. Hmm, a touch of grace from Scotland. It's extraordinary. It's unusual. It's innovative. And it, it feels um, very cool for young people to come up and say they're inspired by the work that we did because that's what it's all about, especially when you have a lifetime achievement and you're of a certain age. Now is the age to um, just tell your story and see if you can help young people as they move along their journey. It's important to celebrate and I learned quite a bit about um, the sporting industry in Scotland and um, it seems like it has a lot of growth opportunities and when I'm quite inspired by all the women entrepreneurs and how they've seen a need because sports is something that you, it's very emotional. It's physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual, and it has a great pull. And when you see the, um, the challenges and the solutions, it makes you feel like uh, you can create your own world and your own prosperity and jobs and a great product. celebrating businesses and partnerships which in the last few years have demonstrated the power of innovation in unique and tangible ways within the sports industry. Our first award now is the best new sports product or service and the winner is Golfin. <laughs> We're absolutely delighted uh, that it's the um, prestige of the award which uh, is a reflection on how hard golfing has worked over the last year. So it's, uh, it's great to be recognised for it. Um, I think the innovation of the product, I think the vision that we have of um, trying to get more kids into golf around the world is a, an admirable thing to do and that's been reflected in the support that we've had from a lot of the, the partner organisations. Um, I think the innovation in the actual design of the product is exceptional, um, which allows the product to be well received in the marketplace. Very exciting developments for golfing over the next uh, year or so is the development of a, a future ladies golf club, um, not just the children's golf club, and um, uh, ongoing development into further markets around the world and the development of hopefully a global brand. The winner of the Transformative Innovation Award is Diary Doll. This is very exciting for us because it's our first award and hopefully it's the first of many. Um, and there was some real stiff competition, especially in our category, so I'm, I'm very happy about it and I'm very excited. It's a good question, why did we win? I think we won because we're tackling a subject that no one's done before. Um, it's a very simple idea, uh, and they're always supposedly the best. So, um, so I like to think that the judges saw potential and a huge global market available to us um, with a very simple idea. Next for Diary Doll is a big launch uh, for us, our relaunch, if you like, in the uh, beginning of April. We're going into um, 500 pharmacies across the UK. We're going into 45 Debenham stores. Uh, we sell out in John Lewis regularly uh, and we're going into a catalogue company called JD Williams and QVC Television as well. So it's quite, quite a busy um, few months from April onwards. Who knows what's going to happen after that. It's just such an exciting journey and um, I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. 
Uh, there are some really inspirational community-based projects amongst those shortlisted. Uh, but one stood out due to the nature of the partnership forged and at, as, a, as a project, it was felt by the judges to be the most scalable. And that project is... Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Hold your breath. Is... Um, Aberdeen Youth Games. Uh, thrilled to win the award. We were up against some really good projects, and um, so quite surprised, but pleasantly surprised, and uh, really, really chuffed. Um, I think it was the sustainable approach to the project, the Aberdeen Youth Games. Um, we don't have a lot of funding for the project, we're not looking to make money, it's about um, using existing student resource to make a positive community and a positive impact on the community. Um, so I think the fact that we can scale up the project quite a bit, there's a lot we can do, and it's possibly um, scalable in other parts of the country as well. Hopefully it's a model that other universities and colleges will think um, that they might want to follow as well. Onwards and upwards, um, we're looking to expand the project this year, and the, the plan for the next couple of years is to really sort of maximise the project in Aberdeen uh, and maybe even take it overseas as well and take some of our students that are delivering the project in Aberdeen to deliver the project in other communities overseas as well and then we might look to expand across the country or at least um, help other institutions um, take the model and use it in their communities as well. The Sports Innovation Challenge is an entrepreneurial competition for students and recent graduates to develop an innovative idea into a sports business. It's all about using the fresh and often out-of-the-box thinking that students can use to create or develop new sports products and services. So why did Sporting Chance Initiative decide to run the, run the challenge? Um, we decided to run the challenge for two reasons. Uh, firstly, because we want students to see that starting a business is a valid career choice. Secondly, because we believe in entrepreneurship and innovation are critical to really pushing things forward in sport. The nature of the work at Sporting Chance allows us to identify the best ideas and give them the support that they really require. We are able to offer a very simple but robust matchmaking service through our vast network of resources, contacts and clients. We've got a short video that highlights the work that we've done over the past year. I'd now like to ask three of the challenged judges, that's Johnny Curley, Bruce Walker and Bonamy Grimes to the stage with David Sherman, Sporting Chances Marketing Executive, to announce this year's winners. Well, it gives me enormous pleasure to say that the winners of the Sports Innovation Challenge 2015, each receiving £5,000 to develop their business, as well as desk and incubation support at Stirling University Innovation Park, 
for this year are David Hunter, Jamie Kuna, and finally Michael and Lisa Harkins. Surprised, uh, shocked, but um, it's a great award to get. Um, obviously, shows that there's there's uh, a good product there and there's good potential for the product to go on and be a, a business, a successful business. I would say we have quite innovative technology. Um, we're, we're, we're changing how golfers uh, will collect their performance data and hopefully improving their game as well. Um, and we have something quite unique and quite innovative. And I would like to think the judges have, have seen that in our, our technology. Uh, so we set up trials with uh, a number of well-known golf clubs throughout uh, Scotland. We're also setting up trials with college golf teams in America. Um, and, and, and that's basically to refine and improve the product before we launch it. And the aim is to launch it in uh, January 2016. Uh, absolutely amazed and, and shocked actually that I've, that I've managed to, to pull it off. Uh, Honoured as well to be with such great company here as well tonight. I think my, my products, my skis, are, are, are sort of really unique in the marketplace and maybe that's helped, helped me to win the award in that, tonight. So. Uh, so this summer is going to be uh, really, really, really busy sort of developing the products and making sure that by next October, November, they're going to be really, really good. So when I start selling them and put them on people's feet, then they're going to have a big smile on their faces. And this money's going to, going to help me get it there. I feel over the moon. I still can't believe it's happened. I'm just waiting for someone to wake me up yeah, from we my were, dream. After we got the award, I was sitting to Michael at the table and saying, wake up, wake up! Because <laughs> it just doesn't feel real at all. I think why we won the award is because in our application we demonstrated that we're not really in it for ourselves. We really want to reach out to the sport of swimming and try and increase the participation. So what, what we're bringing to the frame is we want to bring a fun cartoon, real life character which children th can grasp onto as their hero and friend and encourage them to take them to the next heights of swimming and produce the next generation of Olympic swimmers. So. We need to get it on the market first, so there's a lot of things you need to do before then. Firstly, get some CAD drawings, get a product made, and then get it tested and tried, get safety tests done on it, and then after some time and loads of effort, get it onto the market and take it from there. And hopefully we'll go global. That's the, the end dream. <laughs> okay, now to our final two awards of the evening arguably the most prestigious of all. To present the award for the Sports Business of the Year 2015, please welcome John Anderson, Director of the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship at the University of Strathclyde. I'm delighted to be uh, one of the judges um, in these inaugural um, Sports Business Innovation Awards. Uh, and I want to specifically congratulate the Sporting Chance Initiative team for firstly getting them developed and delivering a fantastic event. Well done, guys. The nominees all demonstrated strong trading performance in sports-related markets over the last three years and high levels of innovation in their product and services. But they weren't stopping. They were also very ambitious, all of them, about their future plans. So the winner of Sports Business of the Year, First Point USA. Um, feel absolutely fantastic about winning the award. Just to be nominated was quite something. Um, nominated with absolutely fantastic companies, but to win it was quite a shock. So yeah, we're really delighted to win the award. About 14 or 14 years, the company was started through Andrew Keane. He went out to University of Cincinnati, um, done a scholarship over there, did really well, did it uh, soccer. Um, was all American, and was also Hall of Fame over there. And he came back realised there was a, a, an open uh, market opportunity and set up the very first company, sports scholarship company. I think there might have been one or two others, but he, this was the sort of main one. Um, when Andrew first went over, there was 500 international students in America. Now there's over 10,000 um, students, international students in the USA. So it's just grown and grown, and it's not just in soccer. For, for Andrew, our managing director, will probably say from day one that the, the first, the, the main focus of First Point in USA now so obviously be established in the UK, which we are, established in Europe, established in Australia, Oceania and New Zealand. Now the next stage is to go over to America and be a face over there and be a recruitment company over there and match if you like the big boys over there now. That probably say that's the first, that's the next step for First Point USA. 
Now it's time for our final award. Please welcome back to the stage to present the award for Sports Entrepreneur of the Year, Hinda Miller. I'm delighted to have been asked to present this final award for a category which is very close to my heart. This was the category which needed most discussion by the judges because each nominee had their own unique strengths to offer. And the winner is Alex, Alex Feechen. Um, I feel absolutely delighted, I'm very honored to have won it at this stage in my business development. Um, it's a great, great honor, great prize to have won it. Yes. Um, I believe that I've demonstrated um, a real entrepreneurial approach both to my idea to seeing a gap in the market but also to the approach to my business. So the way I manufacture my products, the thought process, I think um, shows a true entrepreneurial approach um, both creatively and in business. For me it's about brand awareness and developing the brand and growing it and really kind of looking towards the future, covering the UK market, European market and eventually taking it to be a global brand. That's my ultimate ambition for the brand. Can I also add my thanks to the Sporting Chance team for all their help in, in pulling this together. It has been an absolutely massive undertaking and no stone was left unturned. Do you know, and I've also been completely bowled over um, by what the winners and all our nominees have, have achieved. F for me, so much of this kind of stuff goes on under the radar and we don't know about it. So it's been a, it's been a real revelation and great to get the, the good news um, out there. Thank you very much indeed for coming along this evening and supporting the awards. It's been brilliant to have you all with us. Mm -hmm.